Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. The city of Detroit responding to calls for evacuations in the area where the ground shifted in southwest Detroit. A final decision on whether a third COVID vaccine dose is needed could come in the next week. We have new information on the debate over boosters. Plus, it's the final weekend of summer, and Paul is tracking a spectacular Sunday for us. Good morning. It's 6 o'clock. I'm Priya Mann. And I'm Kim DiGiulio filling in for Grant today. Thanks for joining us on Local 4 News today. So gearing up for a spectacular yeah. Sunday, you say? I don't know if it can get any better than yesterday. So you were in Ann Arbor at the big house. Yes. And the weather was just perfect. Weather was perfect. The score of the game was perfect. <laughs> uh, can't really complain of, about that. Paul, a lot of <laughs> smiles on this side of the desk this morning. There is. And uh, you two look great this morning. You know that emoji with the smiley face with the two hearts and the eyes? That's what I, right here. That's, That's what I, 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 I just died and went to heaven working with you two this morning. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at four zone weather here. 56 in the city of Detroit, 56 in Taylor. We have 54 in Livonia. Good morning, West Bloomfield. Double nickel for you at 55 degrees, 12 Celsius. Harrow, Ontario and Point Pelee. That's 54 Celsius, by the way, or 54 Fahrenheit, by the way. In our south zone, 52 at Dundee, 53 in Carleton, 51 at Saline. Deerfield's at 53. In our west zone, 50 at Whitmer Lake. You're almost in the 40s there. Milford, you're at 54 degrees. Ann Arbor where the big house is, of course, 53 degrees. And look at our north zone, 46 at Emmett, 45 in Port Huron, 48 in Melvin, 45 in Sandusky, 51 at Deckerville. So let's take a look at our bowl of frosted weather wheats this morning. And what we have for a forecast early this morning is these low 50s, except in the thumb where you got those 40s, but then we're going to rise into the 60s by mid-morning. And the high today is going to be that makes it a KDD, yes. 80 degrees. Beautiful day. We will have the forecast with big changes for the week ahead in just a few, guys. All right, for right now, we will enjoy that. Thanks, Paul. And the investigation into what caused the road to buckle in southwest Detroit will ramp up this week. Yeah, on Saturday, we got an update from the city. DTE was able to reroute one of its gas mains and will restore service to some businesses. Now, that means the Great Lakes Water Authority can resume operations at its plant. Larry Sproul spoke to city officials about the safety concerns of people living in the area. The city says safety is all a part of this underground investigation. Meanwhile, residents here in southwest Detroit say they do not feel safe. Even local representatives are calling on the city to evacuate this area. And now the city is responding to that request. Uh, no more major movement of pavement has occurred uh, since about a week. Detroit Chief Operating Officer Hakeem Berry tells me that's great news when it comes to this area of Dearborn and Fort Streets in southwest Detroit. Just a week ago, the ground mysteriously opened up, causing a lot of destruction. For days, several crews have been working around the clock trying to figure out what happened. We'll be completing our boring uh, over the weekend, and that's where we're doing uh, various soil samples down about 100 feet. And, uh, that, and we look to start excavating sometime early next week, and then we can get into more of what's underneath there and what caused the upheaval. Earlier this week, neighbors complained about a strong odor in the area. Barry says that issue is now fixed. There was an initial um, a minor gas leak that DTE uh, repaired uh, within the first day or so. Friday, several lawmakers, including Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Council Member Raquel Casanenda Lopez, want the city to evacuate nearby residents until the site is safe and secured. They deserve human dignity. They deserve to know exactly what happened. So I am here to call on the mayor's office, on the Department of Homeland Security to immediately go out, canvas the community in English and in Spanish that folks have access and have options. I asked Barry about that request. From day one, uh, when the incident occurred, we have had every agency out, uh, all of our utilities out, and these are the entities that we rely on to tell us if the public is in imminent danger and need to evacuate. And at no time had they uh, gave us any indication that uh, the residents were in danger. And the city says if there is a safety situation here, they will take the necessary precautions. They have ruled out that gas, water, and electricity are not the causes for what happened here. Meanwhile, they say on Monday or Tuesday, they will bring out the heavy equipment and start drilling 
and they said they will take their time in this investigation to make sure things are done correct. Reporting in Southwest Detroit, Larry Sproul, Local 4. Meanwhile, in Flat Rock, the EPA continues to test the air after gas leaked from the Ford plant. They have tested 27 homes and businesses and five schools. They're still monitoring the sewer systems in the evacuation zones. Both Ford and the state have created websites for people impacted by the leak. You can find those links on our website. Click on Detroit.com. A man is shot in the parking lot of a Warren Police Department. Police say a man and woman met at the Police Department Civic Center South Station on Van Dyke in Nine Mile to exchange custody of a child. A 26-year-old man was shot in the face by the boyfriend of the child's mother. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but he's expected to survive. The shooter was taken into custody. The child, however, was not hurt. Time now is 606 and a state lawmaker challenging a personal protection order taken out against him by another lawmaker. Birmingham Democrat Mari Manoogian is alleging Harrison Township Republican Steve Marino is guilty of domestic abuse. The two were involved in a relationship. Sources tell Local 4 the accusation involves threatening text messages, not physical violence. Rep Manoogian was granted a PPO Friday night. Now, last night, Marino's attorney says he expects to receive it Monday and will move to have it set aside. The order could conflict with Marino's ability to vote on the House floor if Manoogian is there. State police are investigating the allegations. And last night, Rep. Manoogian issued a statement on the PPO. It reads in part, I have placed my faith in the judicial system. I'm confident that Steve will be held accountable for his actions and that the truth will prevail. For his part, Marino calls the claims a politically motivated character assassination. In your coronavirus headlines, the country added 1 million new coronavirus cases just in the last week. According to an NBC News tally, the U.S. has surpassed 42 million COVID cases. It happened just seven days after the country reached 41 million cases. In Michigan on Friday, the state reported a two-day total of more than 5,600 new cases. So that's a drop of about 1,000 from Wednesday's two-day total. This all comes as health experts debate whether people need a third vaccine dose. John Lawrence reports. Vaccine advisors to the Food and Drug Administration have voted to recommend emergency use authorization of booster doses of the Pfizer vaccine for people 65 and older and those at high risk of severe COVID-19 six months after they received their first shots. But they didn't approve booster doses of the vaccine for everyone 16 and older, citing a lack of data about the safety and efficacy of a third dose. They did make a more conservative decision than I anticipated, but this is an example of science being out there and good-hearted, well-intentioned, smart people debating how to turn that science into public policy. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention makes the final decision on the shots. The agency meets its vaccine advisors next week. But booster shots aren't the key to turning the pandemic around, according to officials and health experts. What is going to be the, the change in the arc of this pandemic by giving a third dose to people who are already vaccinated, as compared to giving two doses to people who are unvaccinated? In the meantime, COVID-19 cases are still overwhelming many hospitals nationwide. There are often procedures that uh, are time sensitive uh, that need to get done that are being delayed longer than we would typically like. Uh, because we don't have the inpatient capacity across the state. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And 76% of all eligible Americans have received at least one shot. In Michigan, that number is 66.7%. And the 49th Motor City Pride Festival kicked off this weekend at Hart Plaza. Oh, it seemed like a lot of fun. It's the state's largest LGBTQ festival and March. Four stages feature local artists, singers, drag performers, and DJs. Over 100 vendors attended, including professionals who provided services and programs for the LGBTQ community. Today is the final day of the festival, and it starts at noon. You know, I was talking to festival organizers a few months ago and they were just so excited. I can't believe the turnout and how many people came out. It looks like a great time. Well, especially the weather came through oh. too, so I'm sure they were really yeah. happy about that. <laughs> Absolutely, awesome. Paul. And we're looking at a repeat, if not a better day today. Oh, we got all sorts of stuff going on. We got the riverfront. We got the, the Birmingham Street Art Fair. I'm going to be there actually today with my wife. It's going to be a great day for whatever you have planned, but this week ahead, 
we have some big changes coming. I'm talking Radio City Music Hall big, so we're going to detail the timeline for that coming up straight ahead.